I'm just checking it's gone live. Oh, it has. That's very, very good. So it's uh, it's lunchtime here and I'm about to go and actually get some food. But I wanted to just take a minute because I've just done a written post on this and I think it bears more. Because what I talked about is actually something I talk about in my program about the way that we talk to ourselves and I'm doing the wry smile because I imagine you're doing a wry smile because we all know that we humans are not kind to ourselves and we say things and we judge ourselves really harshly sometimes I mean often to be honest it is I mean it is the default I've had the great pleasure to work with a a therapist in uh, you know in her professional capacity where we've talked we've talked about this and about why self-talk is so negative and and she was saying that in in her training they they were talking about how you know at the end of the day you know if we go back to I mean I'm a bit iffy on evolutionary psychology because I know it has been used it's been used in the past to to justify all kinds of things and there's a really great study by the way by uh, um, a writer where he's a, he's a psych, psychological researcher oh I'll have a look for it I'll see if I can google it and I'll post it under here if I find it on google scholar it's Ramachandran and it's called gentlemen prefer blondes and it's a bit of a parody on evolutionary psychology it's really interesting uh, but when we think about it I mean, in real psychology, the reason the reason we're all so harsh on ourselves and the reason why, here is the thing, the reason why we stop ourselves from change is because, zip it back a few million years, <laughs> and the, the people, the, the humans who were like, ah, oh, it's probably fine, I'll just eat it. They were the ones who died <laughs> when they ate the dodgy berries. The humans are like, the humans who were like, oh, Oh, I see that little bear. I'm just going to poke it. I wonder what happens. They didn't pass on their genes. The humans who went for the path and realised, oh, there might be some issues here with this, or even didn't realise, or, you know, the ones who overrode their own fear of, oh, this path's looking a bit dodgy. I don't, do you know what? I'm just going to do it anyway. They were the ones who fell off a cliff. They did not procreate. Survival of the fittest. We me and you here right now are the people who were descendants of the ones who got to that rocky path and went oh I'm not sure I think I'm just going to back off a little bit and go a different way hello person who's online good wow I don't even know where you are <laughs> say hello and let me know where you are and what time it is it's lunchtime here so this is one of the reasons that has been posited for why humans hold ourselves back from change because change is scary and because we are truly hardwired to be wary of change and to step back from it and that is a good thing if you're on the edge of a cliff that is a good thing if there's a sleeping bear in front of you you know you back off slowly obviously <laughs> but sometimes we need to take risks sometimes we need to calculate the risks and make a choice and the other side of that the rewards are huge just huge so I wanted to share this is I'm, I'm still doing my my challenge which is just amazing because it's been making me it's been making me really think about my motivations and my clients and what made me make the choice to change last year in the middle of a pandemic when I was terrified and I knew I was a bit lost and I just knew that I had this opportunity in front of me and I was so scared to take it and I did and the amount of private messages that I have had from people who have known me for years even people who don't know me who are like where is your energy coming from who are you amazing person who's you know full of fire full of expertise full of research and reading and power who are you and the people I've known for, I mean, decades, some of them, oh, so old. <laughs> These people are messaging me and saying, who are you? This is amazing. We're so happy to see it. It's because I invested in myself. And it's because I went through a process of finding myself. And I am so, so happy I did. And I had this all inside me all the time. 
And now I am working with people who have this loving, nurturing parent inside them. And I'm, I'm going to call it, they're scared. They're scared to take the leap into something new and different. And the people who have, the people who I have worked with, I mean, I, I I need to get over this, I think, a little bit because I find it a bit awkward putting up testimonials because it's a bit like, oh, look at me, I do really good. But actually, it's important, I think, to do it. So I'm going to make myself do it more and get over my own fear because I'm not doing it to show off. I'm doing it because I have a passion and I want to show people that it can be different. It doesn't have to be like this. So here are my top five reasons why people limit themselves. These are things that have come up in calls And I always say this to people, when we get on a discovery call, it's a discovery call. It's not called a sales call. It's called a discovery call because we're learning more about each other. You're learning about me. I'm learning about you. And and we're just talking about what I would do on my program, how I, you know, how I support you. And if you get to the end of that and you have, okay, I don't think this is right for me. For me, that's brilliant. I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive, but it's not. For me, that is a win-win for everyone. If, or if you get to the end of a phone call with, with me for the discovery call and you're like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this. I need to. I'm not, there was one lady who I'm about to start working with, which is really cool. She was like, I really need to finish building the extra rooms on my house <laughs> because my brain is not in this space. And then, you know, she built the extra rooms and she came back. And now we go. Woo-hoo. And it's very exciting. And if you get to the end of the call and you're like, yes, doing it, doing it. And we talk about things that, you know, things that are scary, things that are making us nervous. And it, it's totally your decision. So for an empowered, I call it an empowered no or an empowered not yet. This is a success because the point is it's discovery. So by the end of our, say, 45 minutes, half an hour and 45 minutes together, I want you to finish that time with clarity and understanding of what are your next steps? Where are you now? What is life like now? What could it be like? How are you going to get there? And if that is not with me, that's fine because what I want for you is clarity. I want for you to feel safe. I want for you to be allowed to dream. And if you then go, okay, bring it, sign me up. Yay! You know, we'll have a little party. That's great. And then we'll get to it and then your life will change. It's amazing. So an empowered yes, an empowered no, an empowered not yet but soon. All of these are brilliant outcomes for me because it's all about change and it's all about clarity and understanding. So with that, here are my five top reasons that I've talked with people. And actually, it's funny because they were the same for me in a different context. Because change is change is change. And change is scary. Our subconscious has a job and it is to keep us safe. And familiar is safe. Even if familiar is crap. (laughs) Even if familiar is self-doubt and feeling lonely and feeling like I felt that I had all this potential that was inside me and I was unable to bring it out. And sadly, that was my familiar. So to take a leap into happy, vibrant, excited, successful, that was scary for me. And it sounds, it really does sound counterintuitive. Like, obviously, you'd want to do that. But my subconscious has a job and it is different is scary. I need to keep you safe. And all kinds of stuff was coming up for me. And all kinds of stuff comes up for my clients. And I want you to know that this is normal because this is how the brain works it's trying to stop you from falling off a cliff and there's no cliff here there's no cliff here or at least there is but it's into wonderfulness (laughs) and i will catch you and you know what you will catch yourself because you'll be so powerful so number one thing that's holding people back is when people say oh this is just the most awful thing and it's so heartbreaking people say what if I'm tainted? What if I grew up this way? What if what happened to me has stained me forever and I can't change? 
This to me is a sign of somebody who needs to invest in themselves. Because when we think about this, this is a, a reframe that I do on my program. We, we talk about this, I mean, all the way through. It's a recurring stream. What would you say to a friend? Now, we say these things to ourselves. We worry about these in our deepest, darkest moments. What if I'm tainted? What if it's messed me up forever? What if I don't have it in me to be a loving parent? Oh my God, what if I can't do this? What if I'm the wrong person? If you were talking to a friend, even, you know, not a best friend, even just somebody that you know, and they came out with this, our first response is, oh, honey, how can you think of that? Oh, and it is heartbreaking when you know somebody says that or thinks that about themselves because we on the outside can see this isn't how it is. It's not a thing that happens. You're not tainted. You have every right to feel that way. Your feelings are valid. But know, know that your feelings will change. As you look deeper, as you go forwards, your feelings will change. It will be okay. You don't have to feel like this forever. So that's my first one. And just imagine that is something that you're holding on. If you're holding on to that feeling, imagine what would you say to a friend who said that? Because you need to start being your best friend. That is how change happens. It's called radical self-love. So, and it doesn't feel so radical by the time you've done a couple of weeks with me. By the time you've done the six-week program, you're like, oh, I'm wonderful, that's great. Uh, so, um, number two is, I don't have the right to invest in myself. I get this. I'm a mum of three. I didn't work for, what, five and a half years. And even when I did work, I earned half of what my husband earned, which I hate it. Because I'm no less intelligent. I mean, he hated it too. But I'm no less intelligent than him. We both worked our butts off. We both did amazing things. And I mean, partly because I was younger and he went into management before me. But I felt that I didn't have the right to invest in myself. And you know what's almost funny is that when I said this to John, when I was on the verge of investing in myself, he was like, why would you say that? You're the linchpin of the family. Of course we want to invest in you. No. <laughs> it was it was kind of like I said, it, I mean it wasn't funny because I was like, oh, I'm quite offended by this. But but he was like, why would you think because you're not worthy of being invested in? It's family money. You are the family. You're with the kids all the time. If you're happy and you're skilled up and you know how to interact with the children, I mean, why would I not invest in you? I mean, in my case, it was slightly different because mine was investing in me to have a business that was a sole business that brought light into the world. This was my thing. Mine, mine was about finding myself as a, as, as a woman and a change maker in the world. That is slightly different. But even then, like you said, if this makes you happy, if this fills you with fire, of course we want to invest in you. And this is the funny thing, is when you reframe it from my deepest, darkest moment and my deepest, darkest fears, and you imagine that somebody has just said it to you, what would you say back? And we would all say, and this is what I would have said to everybody, of course you're worthy of investment. And do you know what the amazing thing is? Is that everybody who's been through my program has come out and said, I feel really confident at work now. I feel confident in everything. I said no. There was one lady, and I still, this is going to be like my crown and glory for, forever, I think. She came back and said, hey, this week, I said no. Ah, first time. First time. How awesome is that? So people saying, actually, no, I know my worth. Because even though this is what I do, is parenting and cycle breaking, the ramifications, the ripples of this work on yourself, before we even talk about the kids, are epic and you know what people earn more money you will earn it back people are happier people are calmer their lives are better because they're in a better place and they know how to support their children to be in a better place it ripples out of course you deserve that this is what you'd say to a friend this is always the test um oh number three one two three it wasn't that bad other people have had it much worse. 
when you know, when people talk about their lives, their experiences, their childhoods, and they say, ah, oh, well, you, I mean, nobody hit me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, I understand other people have it worse. Other people do have it worse. This is, this is true across the world. I mean, when we think about covid you know all these things coming out people saying yes we're in the same storm but we're not all in the same boat we are just not for some people it's having huge effects on every areas of their life for other people they're barely touched by it although you know we're all having freedoms curtailed and everybody's anxious and nervous right now but it's it's undeniable that people in some circumstances are worse affected than people in in other circumstances this is a fact and just because you didn't have an Oscar movie worthy awful upbringing doesn't mean that you have to suffer as an adult with the wounds that you have. This is about radical self-love and this is about self-respect again. And and it's also I I think it's also conditioning because we are conditioned with this story as kids. Be grateful for what you've got. Be gra- and yes, of course, gratitude is gratitude is the path to happiness. It's an open secret. Gratitude is the, the path to happiness. That is not the same as gaslighting. That is not the same as, yeah, I know you had a really chaotic background. Just be happy for what you've got. You've got a roof over your head. Be happy for what you've got. That isn't the same as gratitude. That is that is not respecting yourself to say yeah other people had it really badly you know there are children in other countries who have horrific backgrounds but yes if you then that's true the thing is that at the end of the day your life is your life and you have a choice to move forward with it or to stay the same and in some ways it, it's in some ways, it's a bit irrelevant whether other people have had worse upbringings than you or better upbringings than you. You are at a point, if you're watching this, you're at a point where you have this opportunity, which is, you know, the program with me or with other people, or you could go on a discovery call with me and, you know, you get your out your clarity. And then you can choose how to move forwards. I mean, I rec- I've got a whole library of books that I recommend as well. Maybe that's your way forward, is to do a call with me and then to go and read books. Oh, the light's gone a bit funny, sorry. So this is what we say to a friend. Yeah, I know other people have it worse. But if you are still, you know, you still have wounds from your upbringing, you still deserve to have them healed. You deserve better. You deserve love. You deserve healing. This is what we say to somebody else, but it's not what we say to ourselves. Interesting. And numero four, I don't have the time. That's a common one. We never have the time. We never have the time. It's fine. <laughs> I have three kids at home. I world school them. I go out, you know, traveling and on day trips with three. And it's sometimes quite stressful, but also really stressful. Does that make sense? And we're finding our feet in a new country. Um, sleep is still elusive in our household. It's getting better. It's not really, is it? Um, you know, what I'm trying to say is I don't have time. I don't have time for this. But I make time for this because it's important. I don't have time for yoga. I did yoga yesterday at 10 p.m. <laughs> because I knew I needed it and I made time for it. And actually it was worth it because I felt so much better and I slept better. So as you would say to a friend, yeah, maybe, maybe you don't have time. But maybe we could do a bargain and we could do a kid swap now that restrictions are easing. Maybe you could just find, you know, one hour. And if it was one hour that made your life so much easier and flowed better and stopped having fights about everything with your kids, that hour is an investment. It's about mindset. We can find it if you want it. you got to want it. Can't go anymore with that one it's it's really easy and do you know what actually that's one of our subconscious things of like i need to keep you safe i need to keep you safe i need to keep you in the familiar even if even when the familiar actually isn't that positive your subconscious is throwing stuff up like oh you don't have time oh you can't do this oh that's another thing and you have to you just have to get quiet get 
calm and really think I mean if you need to lock yourself in the bathroom do it and just think is it true that I don't have time or is this my subconscious keeping me safe by trying to throw up blocks to change only you know but have a think what you would say to your friend who was on the verge of change positive change brilliant change life affirming change that made everything happier just think uh, the last one is, and I actually really love this one because this one comes up on every call that I've ever done. It's all a bit weird. It's all a bit different. I've never done anything like this. It's not like therapy, is it? It's a program. It's not. Uh, you do meditations. Oh, they're a bit woo. Oh, not sure. I love it. This is why it's so great because, I mean, it's an old adage, but I'm going to use it anyway. Nothing grows in the comfort zone nothing grows it's just the same and really what you need to think is am I willing to flick through all of Laura's videos and and have a think am I willing to try meditation am I willing to try something new am I willing to look deeper at myself with the support of somebody who knows what they're doing am I willing to do that to push myself a little bit with huge gains that I know other people have got. Am I willing to take this chance knowing there is a huge transformation on the other side? Knowing that this is my path to a connected family where we don't fight so much or even or even the amazing client who said, okay, we started working together with eight weeks ago. So this was after the program. And I've just realized that I haven't had a stand-up fight with my teenager for seven and a half weeks. I mean, these are the results that we get. And that was in the middle of the pandemic where her kids were with her all day, every day. And she was trying to work from home and, ah, oh, that was really stressful. Do you want that? I mean, of course we all want that. That would be awesome. And, you know, the thing is that if you do the same thing and you read the same books and you stress out in the same way and you beat yourself up in the same way, you're going to get the same. And that is what your subconscious wants. It wants you to stay the same because same is safe. But of course, same isn't always great. And if you want something different, you need to try something different. And yeah, it might be a bit woo. Yeah, it might be a bit strange. But I can tell you that it will be really fun and we will laugh. We might cry. <laughs> we will think and we will learn and we will grow because I grow with you with every single client that I work with. And the other side, the other side is worth the discomfort. It's worth the, okay, I'm going to close my eyes. I even have a, um, an awesome client who's now finished with me. And she used to say, you know, when we used to do the, the meditation, she used to say, do you mind if I shut my, if I just shut my thing off? And she would turn her work come off. <laughs> That's fine by me. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable within where you are. So they're the top five. Uh, they are actually in a text uh, below. So they're in a text post that I just done like, just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, I challenge you, especially if you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh man, what she does sounds really good. Oh man, we do fight a lot and I really wish it wasn't like this and COVID and being at home brought it all up and it's made it all so much bigger. And I don't want this as my kids grow older I don't want my teenagers to leave home disconnected I don't want to repeat the patterns that I had growing up or if it's not an intergenerational cycle that you're breaking free of if it's you know a more recent like the last couple of years or even the last COVID year and you just want to break it and get back to happy and loving and normal and you're thinking but I just I'm a bit scared know this Scary is fine. Scary is normal. Scary is a sign that you are on the verge of your comfort zone and you're about to take a step. Think these things through. Are they objective truths? Are they facts? What would you say to a friend? And then if you want to, you can send me a message and we can book a call. Remember, the call is just a chat. Because, you know, there's no point in pinging messages where everyone just gets carpal tunnel syndrome. It's frustrating. And, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs>
I'm really looking forward to um to hearing if you'd like to throw up you know on the on the comments if you'd like to throw up what came up for you when I was talking and was there anything that made you go ding 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 ah yes that's me brilliant speak to you soon have a lovely well day afternoon wherever you are evening bye